We continue with Holy Bible reading to request divine union, part 92. Uh, we finish with 1 Chronicles, then we'll go to 2 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles, chapter 29. Collections to build the temple. Furthermore, King David said to the entire assembly, My one son Solomon, whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced in the work, is a great work for the temple, is not for man, but for the Lord God. According to all the means possible, I prepared gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, onyx stones, costly and precious stones and various colors of various colors, and much marble for the house of my Lord. And because I took pleasure in the house of my God, I gave to the house of my God gold and silver, over and above what I procured for myself, more than all I prepared for my house of my God, over and above all I prepared for my consecrated house. 3,000 talents of the gold of Ophir and 7,000 talents of refined silver to be overlaid in these the walls of the sanctuary by the hands of craftsmen, and who this day zealously dedicates his hands for the Lord. Then the heads of the families, the princes of the sons of Israel, and the captains of thousands and of, of hundred, with the officers over the king's work, offered willingly. They gave for the work of the house of God 5,000 talents of gold and 10,000 Dariks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron, and whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hands of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced as a result of their willingness, for they offered willingly to the Lord with their whole heart. King David rejoiced greatly. David gives praise to God. With this, King David blessed the Lord before all the assembly, saying, Blessed are you, O Lord God of Israel, our Father, unto the ages of ages. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the might. You are master over all that is in heaven and on the earth. Every king and nation is thrown into confusion before you. From the first you are the, the wealth and the glory who reigns over, over all as a Lord and dominion of all. In your hand is power and authority, and you are almighty with your hand to increase and establish all things. And now, Lord, we give thanks to you, and we praise your glorious name. But who am I, and who are my people, that we are able to be zealous in offering to you? For all things are yours, and of your own we give to you. For we are strangers before you, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days upon the earth are as a shadow, and there are none that remain. O Lord God, as for all this abundance which I have prepared, that a house should be built in your holy name, it is of your hand, and all is yours. I know also, O Lord, that you search the heart, and you love righteousness. As for me, in the sincerity of my heart, I willingly offer all these things. And now I see your people who brought themselves here joyfully to offer willingly to you. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep under guard these things in the thoughts of the heart of your people forever and lead their heart, inward, their heart towards you. And give my son Solomon a fitting heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your ordinances and bring to an end the final preparation of your house. Then David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God, and everyone in the congregation bless the Lord God of their fathers, and bowed down before the Lord and the king. Solomon anointed king. The next day after the first day, David sacrificed and offered up whole burnt offerings to the Lord, even a thousand calves, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, along with their drink offerings, and an abundance of sacrifices for all Israel. So they ate and drank before the Lord with great gladness on that day, and they made Solomon the son of David king a second time, and anointed him king before the Lord, and Zadok to the priesthood. Then Solomon sat upon the throne of David his father, and was well pleased and prospered, and all Israel listened to him. All the leaders and the mighty men, as well as all the sons of King David his father, were subject to him. And the Lord exalted Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and gave him the glory of a king which was not given any king of Israel before him. Review of David's reign. Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over Israel 40 years in Hebron for seven years and in Jerusalem for 33 years. So he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and glory, 
Solomon his son reigned in his stead, and the remaining works of King David the former and latter are written in the book of Samuel the seer, in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer, concerning all his reign, his power, and the events that happened to him, to Israel, and to all the kingdoms of the lands. And we continue to 2 Chronicles. Chapter 1, Solomon prays for wisdom. When Solomon, the son of David, was firmly established over his kingdom, the Lord his God was with him and magnified him in honor. Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds, to the judges, to all the rulers over Israel and to the heads of the families. Solomon went with all the assembly to the high place at Gibeon, for the tabernacle of meeting with God was there, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, made in the wilderness. David had brought up the ark of God from the city of kiriath Jearim to the place he prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. And the bronze altar made by Bazalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, was there before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the assembly inquired about it. Solomon made an offering there on the bronze altar before the Lord at the tabernacle of meeting, offering a thousand burnt offerings on it. God appeared to Solomon that night and said to him, Tell me what you want me to give you. And Solomon said to God, You showed great mercy to David my father and made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your name be established on my father David, for you made me king over a people numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and understanding so that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this great people of yours? And God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you did not ask for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor did you ask for long life, but you asked for wisdom and understanding for yourself, that you might judge my people over whom I made you king. Now I will give you this wisdom and understanding. I will also give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings before you possessed, nor shall any after you possess. So Solomon came to Jerusalem from the high place at Gibeon, from before the tabernacle of witness, and reigned over Israel. Solomon's power and riches. And Solomon collected chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he stationed at the chariot cities. And the people were with the king in Jerusalem, the king made silver and gold as plentiful in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedars as abundant in Judea as sycamores in the plain. And Solomon had horses imported from Egypt. The king's merchants paid the going price. They acquired and imported from Egypt a chariot for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. They also brought them to all the kings of the Hittites and to the kings of Syria. Solomon said he would build a house in the name of the Lord and a house for his kingdom. Chapter 2, Solomon plans to build a temple. Solomon selected 70,000 men to bear burdens, 80,000 to quarry stones in the mountains, and 3,600 to oversee them. Then Solomon sent to Hiram, king of Tyre, saying, As you dealt with David my father and sent him cedars to build himself a house to dwell in, behold, I his son am building a house for the name of the Lord my God to dedicate it to him to burn sweet incense before him, to offer showbread continually, and to offer up burnt offerings continually morning and evening, and on the Sabbaths, on the new moons, and on the festivals of the Lord our God. This is a perpetual ordinance for Israel, and the house I am going to build will be great, for our God is greater than all gods. Who is able to build him a house, since heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain his glory? Who am I then to build him a house, except to burn incense before him. Therefore send me at once a wise man skilled to work in gold and silver, in bronze and iron, in purple and crimson and blue, and who can work skillfully with the skilled men with me in Judah and Jerusalem, whom David my father provided. Also send me cedar and cypress and pine timber from Lebanon, for I know that your servants are skilled in cutting timber in Lebanon. And indeed my servants and your servants will go to prepare an abundance of timber for me, because the house I am about to build is to be great and glorious. And indeed to your servants, the woodsmen who cut timber, I gave 20,000 cords, cores of wheat, 20,000 cores of barley, 20,000 baths of wine, and 20,000 baths of oil. Then Hiram, king of Tyre, sent an answer in writing to Solomon. 
He said, because the Lord loves his people, he made you king over them. Hiram also said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel who made heaven and earth, for he gave King David a wise son, endowed with prudence and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal house for himself. And now I have sent a skillful man endowed with discernment, Huram, my father, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skilled at working in gold and silver, bronze and iron, stone and wood, at weaving purple and blue, fine linen and crimson, and at making and engraving and accomplishing any plan that may be given to him. With your skillful men and with the skillful men of my lord David your father, now therefore let my lord send his servants the wheat, the barley, the oil, and the wine he spoke of, and we will cut as much wood from Lebanon as you need. We will bring it to you in rafts by sea at jo to Joppa, and you will carry it to Jerusalem. Construction begins on the temple. Then Solomon gathered all the foreigners in the land of Israel, after the census in which David his father had numbered them, and they were found to be 153,600. And he made 70,000 of them bearers of burdens, 80,000 stonecutters in the mountains, and 3,600 to oversee the people's work. Chapter 3. Now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David, at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And he began to build on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. This is the foundation Solomon laid for the building of the house of God. It was 60 cubits long according to the former measure and 20 cubits wide. The vestibule in front of the sanctuary was 20 cubits long across the width of the house and 120 cubits high. He overlaid the inside with pure gold. He paneled the larger room with cypress and overlaid it with, fi with fine gold. And he carved palm trees and chain work on it. He decorated the house with precious stones for beauty, and the gold was gold from Parvaim. He also overlaid the house, the beams, the doorposts, its walls, its doors with gold, and carved cherubim on the walls. And he made the most holy place. Its length corresponded to the width of the house, 20 cubits, and it was 20 cubits wide. He overlaid it as far as the cherubim with 600 talents of, the fi of fine gold, the weight of the nails was 50 shekels of gold. He overlaid the upper room with gold. In the most holy place he made two wooden cherubims and overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim were 20 cubits in overall length. One wing of one cherub was five cubits touching the wall of the room, and the other wing was five cubits touching the wing of the other cherub. One wing of the other cherub was five cubits as well touching the wall of the room. And the other wing also was five cubits, touching the wing of the other cherub. The wings of these cherubs spanned twenty cubits overall. They stood on their feet and faced inwards. He made the veil of purple, blue, crimson, and fine linen, and wove cherubim into it. In front of the house he made two pillars, thirty-five cubits high, and the capital of the top of each was five cubits. He made wreaths of chain work as in the inner sanctuary, and put them on top of the pillars. And he made 100 pomegranates and put them in the wreaths of the chain work. Then he set up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and the other on the left. He called one on the right hand upholding, and he called the one on the left strength. And uh, in the, the uh, Hebrew language, it's jo um, Joachim and Boaz, if I remember correctly. Uh, meaning up, upholding and strength. And now we go to 1 Thessalonians. We continue with chapter 3. Timothy's visit in Paul's stead. Therefore, when he could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborers in the gospel of Christ to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith, that no one should be shaken by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. For in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation just as it happened, and you know. For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might be in vain. Timothy's report, 
Paul's joy. But now that Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news of your faith and love and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desiring to see us as we also to see you, therefore, brethren, in all our afflictions and distress, we were comforted concerning you by, our, by your faith. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God for you, for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God, night and day praying exceedingly, that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God, the Father himself, and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Chapter 4 Reminders concerning holiness. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort, exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to process his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanliness, but in holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another, and indeed you do so towards all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk properly towards those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. Who will participate in Christ's return? But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. And we'll continue tomorrow with uh, how to await the Lord's coming. Thank you for your support. And God bless you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.